Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. As we begin now our fifth week of Lent, we place our lives at the Lord's altar. Let us humbly ask for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the new covenant. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the grain of wheat that dies to bring life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the chosen and glorified Son of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, and we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know them. All from least the greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Driving back 
from a car repair class, John said to his buddy Joe, I'm going to turn now. Could you stick out your head the window to see if the blinker is working? Sure, Joe replied as he peeked outside. It's working. No, it's not. It's working. No, it's not. It's working. That's an oldie. But it's a joke really meant for us to kind of think about the obvious. So here we are, the fifth Sunday of Lent. We kind of remind ourselves at the beginning of Lent the purpose of going through this beautiful season of penance and charity and almsgiving is a, is a beautiful season for each of us to somehow think about the obvious. That God wants a healthy relationship with each of us. Not only as individuals, but as a community, as a body of Christ. He's always searching. He's always inviting. He's always loving. He's always forgiving. He's always wanting this relationship to be a healthy relationship. And sometimes over the course of our lives, in each and every day of our lives, we tend to kind of get a little selfish and we kind of turn away from Him. And we may make a choice uh, to go against we don't really sometimes even think what we're doing. We just become whom we are, and we're asked to kind of somehow come back to this relationship, this covenant, this promise between two parties. To be able to be in relationship with God. What a blessing to each of us. Knowing that we can lose our way, but yet our God is on our side and wants everything to work in union with Him. Have you ever been recommended a good movie, or a good book, or a nice restaurant, or even possibly a new vehicle? Sure we have. But by whom we receive that recommendation matters to us. If it is a complete stranger versus a close friend, well, that makes a difference, all the difference in the world. We simply trust our friends. One of the joys of my pastorship is seeing friendships form out of parish experiences whether by family gatherings within the Knights of Columbus, maybe, or from many opportunities of Christian formation, from our religious program, or our adult faith sessions, and of course, the many social functions that we usually celebrate during normal times outside of this pandemic. I witness couples out to eat, or at other social functions, or attending other church functions, sitting together simply as friends. These friendships create the foundations of trust as we all mature within our faith and our lives. Our readings of Scripture this weekend force us to see how many times God takes the initiative to start a friendship or a relationship with us. He does so by creating covenants. We see how many times humanity fails the conditions of covenants, and how many times God comes to our rescue. We're reminded in our first reading of the experience of the people of Israel at the base of Mount Sinai, when Moses was up receiving the Ten Commandments, the experience of them turning away from their faith and building a golden calf, a pagan god made out of gold. That golden calf
have had to be destroyed in order for the people truly to believe and turn towards the promises of God. This Lent, what is it in our lives that we need to let go of? What in us must die to self so that we can bring others to Jesus Christ? We too must invite others to this relationship we have with Jesus. Our recommendations will be received with trust simply because our lives have been molded and shaped by God's mercy. Now I realize it's uh, beautiful outside and I also realize that next week it's Palm Sunday weekend, which means it's going to be a long mass. So I'm going to end the homily here with your permission. Okay?
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. And let us pray, hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the work of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Bless your thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, who you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we are glad. <laughs> become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving the thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to them, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, with his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Father, 
and those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, that they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, and our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom and to the hour when we stand before you. Saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Rose of Lima, and all the saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. That freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, which will sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours, forever and ever.
for our visitors that may be here this afternoon. From this point forward, Mass will be a little different than you're used to. In a couple of minutes, I'll be doing a closing prayer, after which uh, both Deacon Steve and myself will place our mask on, purify our hands, and then offer you the Eucharist. So I ask you to come to the center aisle, come up to the last blue line on the center aisle, stop and take off your mask, that point. That way there when we offer you the Eucharist, you're not doing two things at once. Once you receive the Eucharist, simply place your mask back on. You're welcome to stay and pray as long as you want, or you're welcome to go and enjoy your afternoon for Mass will be over. I just ask that if you wish to receive on your tongue, please wait to the end. We'll go quickly, I promise. But waiting to the end, that way there, each time someone receives on the tongue, both of Deacon Steve and myself will have to purify our hands. Let's stand now for our closing prayer. And let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with you. Amen. And may God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go proclaim the gospel by your life. Thanks be to God.